two. Our good friend Chad Brendel, BearcatJournal.com, covers Cincinnati in many, many ways, and they're playing Houston for the championship, the American Conference, two former, uh, well, two future Big 12 teams. Uh, Chad, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. I'm going to start not with that game or even Cincinnati. What are your thoughts about Marcus Freeman and getting that opportunity at Notre Dame? I, I, I'm a Marcus Freeman guy to the core. Uh, Marcus was, was awesome to me and to Bearcat Journal. And, uh, I consider the guy a friend after four years of working with him. And, uh, I couldn't be more excited to see him get that chance, man. If that's, there, there was, there was part of me that was like, well, if, if Fick leaves, Marcus is coming back. Like, <laughs> so, uh, I, I'm really excited for him. I think he is absolutely going to be a star in this profession. Yeah, Chad, do you uh, – I've been saying it for the last few days. Like, who cares that he's only 35? Like, it, to me, that like you might have the next Lincoln Riley on your hands. Just let him loose, right? Yeah, the thing that amazed me is you really got into, like, the, you know, year two and three and four is he started to grow as a defensive coordinator. You know, the, the, the first year they took their lumps, and and a lot of times – you know, you don't see much growth from that, but Freeman took it as a challenge. So the next time they played Navy after giving up like 600 yards on the ground, completely switched all of their principles defensively, went to a four, four front, brought a safety down in the box and they held Navy to like 125 yards. They got beat by UCF twice. The third year they showed up out of nowhere and ran a three, three, five. And not only they ran a three three five, UCF. What they like to do is what they like to do under under Heupel. They run go routes with their receivers and just cycle them all day to wear down your corners. Because generally, people don't rotate corners. Every time a, a DB ran a go route, they came off the field. He put a new corner on the field. Just little stuff like that. They they ran a bear front against Army to try to slow them like. That's stuff you see in the NFL, right? Like, and he had his guys so trained and so dialed in that they were able to, in a week's time, completely change the defense that they were playing to match the opponent. And then as, as he started stacking this stuff in his arsenal, he could just change week by week. Okay, this team does this. We're going to play this way. This team does that. We're going to play that way. And he's a great recruiter. The kids relate to him at an elite level. And I've been blown away by him as a coach, too. So, Chad, it looks like Freeman's going to be the guy at Notre Dame, and that's another job uh, closed down on the coaching carousel. Carousel would probably be about done, if not for Lincoln Riley over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, so what's it been like from the Cincinnati perspective with all the, you know, obviously talk about Luke Fickle and, and as these jobs have come open and then in, in most cases closed, I mean, just what's been the thoughts uh, of Bearcats Nation out there? Really, Notre Dame was the only one that made you uneasy, like really uneasy. It, it, I think the money that got thrown around kind of made you nervous when, you know, Oklahoma and LSU and Florida, you know, you had some big time open jobs that were throwing around heavy, heavy dollars. And you're kind of like, yeah, I don't feel great about this. But Notre Dame is, is you know, he's a, he's a devout Catholic that's Notre Dame. Like it's a Midwest school. It's, it's a, you know, a, a top five job in the nation. Um, so that was really the one that it was like, Oh boy. But from what I've heard, Notre Dame reached out and Luke fickle does as Luke fickle says. And fickle said, uh, I got a championship to play for, you know, if you want to talk when I'm available, you know, we'll talk, but I'm not talking now. I got work to do. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry. No, just that that's that's Luke. And and here they are on the cusp of the college football playoff. Is there still anxiety if they win? Yeah. You need one of three things to happen to feel comfortable, I think. Georgia wins. <laughs> Cuz that knocks Alabama out. Iowa wins cuz that would knock Michigan out. Or Oklahoma State loses to Baylor so that Oklahoma State's not really in the picture anymore. I, I don't think Baylor could get back up high enough to pass them. So 
if any one of those three things happen, I think Cincinnati's comfortably in. If Alabama wins, Michigan wins, Oklahoma State wins, it's going to be a sweat from Saturday evening until Sunday at noon. Chad, for the game on Saturday, Houston's won 11 games in a row. I know they haven't, uh, you, they don't have a, a notch in their belt like Notre Dame, but what makes you nervous about, about Houston uh, on Saturday? Uh, two things. Uh, their, their defensive line is really good and they're really aggressive. Um, they, they, they only, generally only bring four. They don't blitz because they don't have to. They get pressure with four. Um, and Cincinnati's offensive line has been, really good at times, but they've had some inconsistencies. So you worry just a bit about, you know, the, the pass game and Houston getting home. <laughs> Offensively, it's, it's the running back, the McCaskill kid, the freshman. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, he's electric. And Cincinnati's had some problems this season, slowing down the run. Uh, it's been more power run than, you know, McCaskill's a little bit more speed, but he's, he's got both qualities. Um, so he just looks like a guy that, you know, if, if Holgerson decides our best chance to win is, is to keep the ball away from Cincinnati, slow down the pace of this game. They've got a running back can do it. That can do it. Cause that kid is really talented. Uh, Chad, I asked you a question about Freeman and obviously we've all brought up fickle for obvious reasons. Were you surprised that Brian Kelly bolted because didn't he kind of bolted in the dark with Cincinnati, didn't he? He is who we thought he was. <laughs> he, he left. I don't know how much you guys know about that story. He It broke that he was going to be the next head coach at Notre Dame during the team banquet a couple days after they beat Pitt to go 12-0 and and win the Big East Championship. So he's in the banquet lying to the players' faces about how much he loves them, and they're looking at their phones – seeing that, you know, it's being reported that Brian Kelly's the next coach at Notre Dame. So he, at the end of the banquet, he has two police officers escort him into a side room where they were having the banquet, where he does a live interview with ESPN about becoming the head coach at Notre Dame. And then he left out the kitchen exit. So they didn't have to face his players. Yeah. That kind of sucks. <laughs> that, that, uh, How about this? Yeah. Uh, I heard this from our 24-7 Notre Dame publisher, Tom Loy. Eight o'clock Monday night, he was in the living room of a recruit for Notre Dame telling the kid how he learned his lesson the way that he left Cincinnati and he would never do that again. (laughs) As his agent was finalizing the contract with LSU. That guy, look, He's an outstanding football coach. But as good as he is as a football coach, is as bad as he is as a human. Chad, thank you very much. Hey, I, I want to always No ask hard you, feeling. No, no. Okay. <laughs> I want to ask you because I know your wife has been through a hell a, a, a lot. And you told me that she was having the doctor's appointment. I hope you don't mind. Is she doing okay? Had an angiogram today. We've been waiting three months for her kidneys to heal so she can have the angiogram. I uh, had the angiogram, and it came back clean, no blockages, heart looks good, everything's good. So positive news today, so we're, we're, we're in good spirits today. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. That's awesome. Chad Brendel covers Cincinnati, Bearcat Journal, 247 Sports.